That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. This historic moment, when astronaut Neil Armstrong stepped foot on the moon, was the product of years of hurried research, Cold War tensions, and billions of dollars in government spending. Ignition sequence start. Engines on. Lift off. We have lift off. Only 12 people have walked on the lunar surface, all men, all American. And no one has been back since 1972, after President Richard Nixon shut down the Apollo project. Three, two, one. As the crew of the last Apollo mission flew home, Nixon said, this may be the last time in this century that men will walk on the moon. But since then, NASA has done a bunch of other important things, like launch the Hubble Space Telescope, help shape the International Space Station, and develop sophisticated robotics to explore far-off planets. But nothing, with maybe the exception of human exploration of Mars, has ever really captured the same awe and fascination as the moon. And now, 50 years later, multiple countries and companies are racing back to the moon and this time, the goal is to stay. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Almost all past American presidents have expressed some interest in returning to the moon. But that talk is rarely backed up with actual money. This could be the biggest difference in the Trump administration's approach to space policy. Though NASA has never seen the same flow of money as it did in the 60s, under Trump, it got all the money it asked for, plus another $1.6 billion. And it's all part of the administration's big space vision. This time, we will do more than plant our flag and leave our footprints. We will establish a long-term presence and build the foundation for an eventual mission to Mars, which is actually going to happen very quickly. Trump wants NASA to send people back to the moon by 2024, and then work towards developing a sustainable human presence there by 2028. To do that, NASA plans to build a station called the Lunar Gateway that will orbit the moon, allowing people to go to and from the lunar surface more easily. To get the gateway into orbit, NASA is developing a massive new rocket to transport it. We also know that the 2024 landing will occur near the moon's south pole and will include at least one woman astronaut. NASA even gave the mission a cool name, Artemis, Artemis. after the twin sister of Apollo and the goddess of the moon. Scientifically, and we've, we've just only touched the surface with Apollo. That's Jack Burns, a professor of astrophysics and the director of the NASA-funded Network for Exploration and Space Science. That's one of the things that agitates me when I hear people when they talk about the moon. Oh, been there, done that. No, sorry, we, we haven't. We haven't been to the most interesting places and we certainly haven't done all of the science um, by a long shot that there is to do on the moon. Burns said to imagine the Lunar Gateway as the moon's version of the McMurdo Station, Antarctica's main research center, which hosts scientists from around the world. But the Gateway also serves another goal that's likely more important to Trump. The mission to Mars. One of the main purposes of the Gateway will be to function as a base where astronauts can prepare for the much longer, more challenging trip to Mars. This is definitely practice for Mars. It's practice for going to asteroids. Um, and it's that first toe in the uh, ocean of space, if you will. Three, two, one, zero. Most experts agree that the timeline for returning humans to the moon is very aggressive, somewhat wishful, and will require a lot more money. There's a long-standing debate among scientists about whether human space travel is worth the risk and the cost. It's estimated that every kilogram of weight brought from Earth to the moon costs roughly $35,000. Right now, we don't know exactly how much all of this is going to cost. Burns estimates that it's going to take another 20 to $50 billion for just the lunar mission. But this time, NASA isn't going it alone. Multiple private aerospace firms have been awarded contracts to build different components of the mission. In the 1960s, it took 
you know, enormous resources for the greatest superpower uh, in the world to get there. Today, a small company for $50 million can put an unmanned lander uh, using all of that new technology. So one of the reasons the moon is hot right now is simply we can do it now. China, India, and Israel all attempted unmanned lunar landings in 2019. The European Space Agency says it wants to start mining the lunar surface, and China and Russia are working towards developing a lunar colony. So yeah, the moon is really hot right now. And that's partly because it's so close to Earth, so it's seen as a stepping stone to exploring deeper space. We are in this new space race, in my mind, uh, with other nations and Not only the countries, but the entrepreneurs. Leonard David is a veteran space journalist who recently published the book about the race to the moon. I've talked to quite a few people that want to go to the moon and harvest the resources of the moon. But if you're a profit-making company, you don't want anybody else making profit. You want to be the first one there to dig it all up and and, uh, make money at it. I think we should build a permanent human settlement on one of the poles of the moon. From Jeff Bezos' moon colonies to Richard Branson's plans for space tourism, the biggest difference in space exploration now versus the 60s is the entrance of private industry. At the same time, though, space is one of the most internationally collaborative places. Even if countries aren't seeing eye to eye on Earth, it's likely that they're working together in space. Trump's space dreams may be fueled by his desire to assert American dominance and make America great again, but at the end of the day, it will come down to public interest and public dollars. And that's the way it is.